Our next speaker is Philip Kohler, and um, the talk is about a single prolonged milking interval of 24 hours and how it compromises the well-being of dairy cows. Yes. I welcome you to my presentation of my doctoral thesis about prolonged milking interval of dairy cows and the effect on animal welfare and animal health. I'll first give you a short introduction about the problems and the aims of our study. Then I will explain the study design and some details on the data collection. And then I will give, present the most important results and give a short conclusion at the end. Um, problems are that, that cows at national and international competitive dairy cow shows are often presented with overfilled or so-called overbagged others. Cows are not milked for a prolonged milking interval or for a prolonged interval before the show in order to get a better rank, a, not a better other shape and therefore a better ranking at the show. Although unnecessary suffering and overbagging are prohibited in the showing rules of most dairy cow shows, often no monitoring systems are defined or practiced. And if the animal welfare is monitoring at the show only subjectively by individual assessment of the cows. Um, additionally, no tools are available for an objective and accurate assessment of other fill at the cow show and the consequences of this other fill on the animal well-being. Therefore, the aims of our study were to investigate the effect of a prolonged milking interval of 24 hours on the well-being and health of dairy cows, and secondly, po find potential tools for an objective assessment of well-being of cows um, at dairy cow shows. I'm coming to the study design. Um, in our study, 15 Holstein cows were examined in a tile stall um, at the research station in Switzerland. The study consisted out of three phases, a baseline period, a prolonged milking interval, and a recovery period. During the, in the baseline period, normal values of each cow were assessed. Um, for this reason, the cows were milked as normally at a 12-hour interval and different parameters of well-being and health were collected in two-hour intervals. During the prolonged milking interval, the cows were not milked for 24 hours and examined every two hours during the first 17 hours and every hour during the last seven hours of the, this phase. And after this phase, the um, cows were monitoring, monitored in a recovery phase of 12 hours. During this phase, um, we collected data every two hours. For the statistics, means of the last six hours of prolonged milking interval are compared with the means of six hours of uh, of baseline period were, were compared with the means of the six hours of prolonged milking interval using paired t-test and Wilcoxon sign drink test for, for normally and non-normally distributed parameters. Now I'm coming to the data collection um, with a nose band sensor as you can see in this picture here. Eating behavior was assessed um, such as uh, eating time and ruminating time. This was recorded continuously and then um, during the examination, which was performed every one or two hours, as explained before, the following variables was, were assessed. Um, with a dynamometer, which you can also see in this picture here, the other firmness was assessed. For this reason, a tip um, was pressed two centimeters deep in the other tissue and the maximal force of penetration was measured. This me method was earlier described by Bertula et al. And in each hindquarters, five measures were performed, always at the same location, and 
averaged for the first year analysis. The cows were um, filmed while walking along a passageway, which can, you can see in this picture. And, um, uh, and the abduction of the hind limbs, hind limbs was caught subjectively by three observers. For this assessment, a visual analog scale was used, zero equaled a minimal imaginable, imaginable abduction and 100 the ma maximal imaginable abduction. The independent ob observers were blinded for cows and times since last milking. The cow cows were also checked for occurrence of edema in the subcutaneous other tissue. You can see an image here which shows uh, an ultrasound picture. This here is the edema we found um, in one cow during the experiment. Um, this was done with a rectal ultrasound probe. The lateral aspects of the front quarters and the rear crease of the other were scanned for subcutaneous edema, as these are the locations where subcutaneous edema is found most frequently due to overbagging. Then somatic cell count was measured at each milking during the experiment and at the four evening milkings after um, the experiment. This was done with a th um, the Laval DCC cell counter. And also um, milk leaking was assessed visually um, at each examination. Also different other parameters were assessed which are not discussed in this presentation. Coming to the results, um, first something on, on this graph. Um, here we can, on the x-axis, you can see um, the timeline with the marked time since the last milking. On the y-axis, we have here eating time. And this, um, the vertical lines represents the milking. Um, the eating behavior was changed during the day and followed the circadianic rhythm. As we can see, um, during night time, um, eating time was decreased and increased during daytime. This we can also see in the prolonged milking interval here. Um, this was mostly due to the m more feed offered during daytime. And we can also see an increased eating time when comparing the last six hours of prolonged milking interval with the last six hours of um, the baseline period. For the statistics, we always um, compared the means of, of this last times of baseline period with the um, last six hours of the prolonged milking interval. And this we can see in, in this box plot here, um, when comparing um, eating time decreased significantly from 22.4 minutes in the baseline period to um, 16.2 minutes per hour in the prolonged milking interval. This might indicate an inc a decreased well-being of, of the cows during this period as eating time is described to be a well-being parameter. And decreased eating time was also described in cows with mastitis and lameness. The scores for hind limb abduction increased with increasing time since the last milking. This you can see in, in, in this graph here. Um, and, and they are the highest at the end of the prolonged milking interval. And in the direct um, comparison, um, the, the, as, uh, this, this fact was confirmed in our analysis as the mean score during the last six hours of baseline period was 41.7 and increased significantly to 62.6. This could uh, uh, indicate an avoidance reaction of the cows as they try to decrease the pressure on the other by the increased abduction. 
In an earlier study, it was shown that the abduction of hind limbs is lower after to compared to before the milking. Um, as expected, other firmness increased during periods when cows were not milked. After, after the milking, other firmness decreased abruptly to approximately one kilogram. When comparing the means, the other firmness was two kilograms higher in the last six hours of prolonged milking interval compared to the last six hours of baseline period. This supposes an increased intramammary pressure due to increased accumulation of milk in the udder. Increased udder firmness previously was observed in other studies um, of cows milked only once a day and in cows after drying off. Milk thinking was only observed in one cow when the cows were milked 12 hourly, but in all 15 cows um, at the end of the prolonged milking interval. This confirms the hypothesis of an increased intramammary pressure as a high intramammary pressure is shown to be a risk factor for, for milk leaking. Increased milk leaking was also observed in cows milked only once a day and in cows after drying off. During the baseline period, which is not shown on this graph here, no cows showed edema of the subcutaneous tissue, but after 24 hours of milk stasis, 10 out of 15 cows showed an edema. All cows recovered from this edema within 18 hours um, of recovery phase when they were milked 12 hourly. Edema constitutes a non-physiological process and show the impaired well-being of these cows. We suppose that the formation of the edema might be correlated with the leaky state of the blood milk barrier as the blood milk barrier is described to change to a leaky state nearly at the same time as we observed the first edema in our experiment. Um, the formation of edema in the subcutaneous other tissue was earlier dis already described in showing cattle and there the average time until the, the edema uh, occurred was 21 hours. This was comparable to our study with 19 hours. Um, somatic cell count increased after a single prolonged milking interval of 24 hours. During the experiment, no infections with major pathogens occurred. Somatic cell count was significantly increased from 12 um, to 72 hours after the prolonged milking interval. This increase in somatic cell counts show that cow's health is disturbed by a prolonged milking interval of 24 hours. Further research is although needed to investigate the long term of a prolonged milking interval on the other health. Therefore, we conclude that the well-being um, of cows during a prolonged milking interval of 24 hours is impaired and the behavior and, as the behavior and the posture are changed. Additionally, the health of the cows is disturbed as we found edema in the subcutaneous other tissue and increased somatic cell count. Therefore, prolonged milking intervals at dairy cow shows might be an animal welfare problem and objective control mechanisms are needed to assess and protect the animal welfare at dairy cow shows. Further research is needed to uh, they develop these control mechanisms. That's the references needed for this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Philip. Um, any uh, quick question? Yes, there's one here. Uh, uh, Roger Blowy, um, Vet Gloucester, UK. Um, thank you for an interesting presentation. 
What was the level of yield of the cows uh, in your study, please? Um, the yield... Um, I, I don't know the, the actual number. It was uh, the, the, the yield during the lactation was approximately 7,000 kilograms. Not, not that high as, as in showing cattle. Um, it was just uh, the study population. Yeah, I think in high reading, yielding cows, the, the effects would be more severe, mm. even. Is that okay? Okay, thanks, the speaker again. Thank you, Philip.